argument. Let me know what you think. GBviews at gbnews.uk. Now, I sat here yesterday evening and I said to you that I was confident through my contacts on the South Coast that the number of people coming in to the United Kingdom via small boats yesterday would be in excess of 400. And sure enough, this morning, we got the figure and it was a new record of 482. And they came again today. Look at this. Look at this tiny little boat that made it all the way across to Kingsdown Beach. I mean, extraordinary uh, that anybody would cross the channel in something as small as that. Um, I would suspect that's very much an amateur operation, possibly a stolen boat, not one of the bigger migrant boats that we tend to see that are run by the criminal trafficking gangs. But, you know, the fact is, the fact is, as I predicted, it'll be over 10,000 people. These pictures are Dover Harbour this morning. Yep, after the 482 that came yesterday, it was very busy in the channel again this morning. These boats being picked up by Border Force and brought in to Dover. Other boats that make it all the way across and, and, and land on the beaches. In fact, one landed yesterday on the army ranges at High, and they had to stop firing. I don't know what the numbers are today into Dover. They won't be as many as 482, but it will still be a very significant number. And nothing, I'm afraid, is going to change, in my view. Or perhaps it will, because joining us now is Kevin Saunders, the former Chief Immigration Officer for the UK Border Force at Calais. Good evening and welcome to GB News. Good evening, Nigel. Now, I'm particularly interested in talking to you because you were with Border Force across the other side of the water in Calais. And I spoke to the Calais Member of Parliament the other day. Um, and Priti Patel keeps giving the French money. 30 million last November, another 54 million a couple of weeks ago. And we keep giving the French all this money. In your opinion, are the French actually trying hard to prevent these boats from leaving French beaches? They're trying hard on the land. Their, their remit seems to be, if they can catch the migrants trying to get into the water, they'll stop them. Once they're in the water, they view it as our problem. Yeah, I mean, literally, I've, I've, I've heard reports of migrant dinghies no more than 50 metres off the French beaches. I mean, frankly, where they could get out and paddle back to shore, and yet the gendarmerie ignore that, let them get a bit deeper, and then the French Navy, how jolly nice of them, then escort those boats straight into British waters. Why are we allowing this situation to continue? Why, indeed. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, we shouldn't be. Now, it's interesting that the Home Secretary's gone to visit the Greeks um, yes. because the Greek, the Greek um, coastal patrol vessels are adopting a much different approach. They are actually pushing them back into Turkish waters. So, my argument is, if the Greeks can do it, with the support of Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the EU, why can't we push the, ve the, the, the vessels back into French waters? Gosh. Now, is it, the French... with, with these views, is this why you're not working at UK Border Force anymore? Because I don't think that's what they believe in, is it? <laughs> I'm retired, fortunately. OK. Um, <laughs> but but it, it, it's a double-edged sword to a certain extent, Nigel. The French are saying uh, it is illegal for us to push the boats back into French waters, but they are not saying it is illegal for the Greeks to push the boats back into Turkish waters. Now, you're a politician. You worked in the EU. Perhaps you can answer the question. You know, oh, there the, are the no EU. rules in the EU. There are no rules there in the EU. No. Everyone does as they want, frankly. <laughs> That's right. Now... There has been a lot of argument over Dublin, the Dublin Convention. Yep. Now, as you will know very well, when we were in the EU, Dublin wasn't being enforced because the Europeans wouldn't let us send people back, despite the fact that these people had been registered in another EU country. In fact, under Dublin, the only people that were cooperating with the UK over Dublin 
was Ireland. So you've, you've worked in Calais, you've been part of the border force, you know this issue well. Tell me something. If we finally mustered up the courage to do what the Australians did a decade ago to stop that problem, to do what the Greeks have started to do off their seas, if we finally mustered the courage, the backbone to do it, and we took boats back straight to, whether it's Calais or Boulogne Harbour or French beaches, how do you think the French would react? The French would have a fit. <laughs> but what would, what would happen is it would bring the French to the negotiating table. At right. the moment, the French government won't speak to the British government because they're upset about fishing licences, they're upset about the Channel Islands, and they're upset about us um, telling them they're not doing their job about migrants. Uh, apparently, Macron has refused to meet with the Prime Minister. So, if we adopt a more robust approach in the yep. Channel, um, it will, I think it will scare the French, and I think they will come to the negotiating table. They've got to. Well, I, I have to say, I think you're right, but it's going to take political will. Kevin, thank you for joining us here on GB News. And that